So my name is Konstantin and uh, my nickname is Dr. K. And uh, I am professor in uh, University of St. Petersburg, Russia, uh, mostly in biophysics, computer science. At the same time, I am uh, deputy director of the National Institute of Physical Culture and Sport in Russia. And I'm a president of uh, Bioelectrographic Society, International Society. I'm a member of many, many, many other uh, academic uh, uh, societies. I will present you our technology and our results on study human energy field and energy fields of environment. So we are based on idea of triple manifestation of human being. Uh, this are our physical body, our consciousness and our spiritual part. And those are indivisible parts of our beings. So without physical body, we may be somewhere in space, but we are not here on the earth. But without our consciousness, we can't understand what's going on. But without our soul, we are like animals. So in our research, we try to study it. And it's very important that now, at this moment, in science, we have a lot of bridges and correlations between scientific Western science and uh, Oriental wisdom. And one of the f uh, few, those are Einstein equation that give us connection between energy and mass. And it shows that energy may transform into mass and vice versa. And what does it mean mass? It is our body, it's our physical side. What does its energy? It's our soul. And what does it light? It is spirit. It is Holy Spirit. So you see it is very clear correlation between modern physics and our spiritual ideas. But what is energy? What is human energy? We are based, first of all, on a biophysical mechanism of life. And it is very well known cycle how with light we stimulate electrons, first of all, in plants. And I always ask, what is the best transformation of energy, solar energy, into matter? It is, it is plants. It is plants and vegetables. Because they transform solar energy with water and air, they transform into matter. And all matter that we have in our life that we are based on, would it be vegetations, would it be animal kingdom, uh, it's all based on light, water, and air, nothing else. And it's all the process of direct transformation. And we have demonstrated in our papers that uh, electron excited states, those are the basis of life. This paper is published in the uh, United States, so uh, this gives us a bridge. The notion of energy, very well known in ancient science, the notion of energy meridiums, the notion of chakras, of energy balance may be really correlated, very well correlated with modern physics. And uh, we have very clear correlations. You can find it in my books, I have it. But of course it's not that easy. And I always give very simple examples. For example, very simple example. Can a bird, a bird fly across Atlantis? Very simple, you know. You know, they are flying. <coughs> I can uh, prove you that it's impossible for the bird to fly across Atlantis. So it was uh, direct experiments. People was measuring energy spent by birds flying on long distance, migration flights. And it was uh, demonstrated that for 800 kilometers, bird takes seven, practically eight hours, non-stop, and it takes her 120 kilojoule of energy. So it was absolutely precise measurement that was correlated with calculations, with uh, other ex laboratory experiments. Uh, so it was done by a team of international scientists and it's published in a, in a paper. And it was found at the same time that birds practically don't lose weight. You know, that we, when we fly uh, from, say, London to New York, we have a plane plane has some qu qu quantity of fuel, and then when it lands, 
it's practically all the fuel are gone. So it is absolutely normal physical process. So plane loses its weight on the flight. Birds, they don't. They don't lose weight. Just a little part, maybe 6%. So if we calculate this 6%, even in the most uh, best case, it would be from 30 to 70 kilojoule. And you remember, it was 120 by that case. And uh, plus, of course, not all the uh, energy they, they have, they consume for flight. They need some other uh, consumption. So, and for bird flying uh, through Atlantis, three, four thousand kilometers, nonstop, they should lose most part of their body in accordance with physics. So, as you see, from the classical point of view, migration and flights, they are impossible. <laughs> but, but they don't know this. <laughs> <laughs> they was not properly trained in schools. <laughs> So they are flying, and they will be flying for thousands of years. It uh, shows us that our understanding of physics, that our modern scientific understanding is very limited. When they tell you in schools that, oh, we know physics, it's not true. It was absolutely the same situation in the beginning of 20th century, when it was established physics, and it was very well known that physics is done. And it was some tiny details. And when um, Erwin Schrodinger, he came to uh, his teachers, he, he, they've told him, please don't go to the theoretical physics. Physics is done. Everything is clear. And it was beginning of 20th century, just before the age of uh, quantum mechanics. Absolutely same situation we have here now. Absolutely same situation. So. The basis of life is sun, air, and water. Those are the basis of life. And uh, we can measure this energy of life. And I, now I transform to a uh, description of our technology that is based on very uh, old uh, invention. It was done in 1777 by German physicist and uh, philosopher George Lichtenberg who found that if we place some subject in the electrical field, we can see light around this subject. Then it was uh, researched by Tesla. And you know Tesla, he was standing on stage. He clicked his fingers, and all his body was illuminated in light. So it was very interesting experiment. Then it was other people. And it became known in the Western world due to family Kirlian in Russia, in Soviet Union who have been able to develop this uh, so-named Kirlian photography. And in Kirlian photography, a lot of people all over the world, they were doing photography of light coming from different parts of the body, from plants, from leaves, uh, from seeds. And uh, they were studying this I interesting phenomenon. But at the same time, it was not considered as scientific. It was not accepted in medical field. Why? Because to make something uh, significant, scientific, we need to have it repeatable, we need to have it reproducible, and we need to have it measurable. So when we have one and the same phenomena measured in different parts of the world, in different laboratories, then it may be considered as scientific. When we can get numbers from measurement, then again we can use it in modern science. Because modern science without statistics, without measurement, it's nothing. So in 1995, we developed an approach. And this approach is based on very uh, understandable physical principle. So we excite electrons uh, in the body, in the subject, and maybe any subject of the world. It may be metal, it may be biological subject, it may be leaf, whatever. And then when cooling, this subject emit light. So it is a very understandable physical process. 
So we were able to make, to create a special instrument. And our first instrument was designed in 1995. And it's still in operation. And it's interesting that our first instrument was uh, taken by uh, researchers in England. And still we are in good contact. They still, they have uh, several instruments, of course, but uh, it's still in operation. Now we have several instruments. And you see they may be uh, compact to study uh, for field research for, and this is a picture of myself measuring in Colombia with Indians. We have uh, very complicated instruments that allow us to take measurements in 0 0.1 second and then to make processing, so it's very convenient for uh, uh, medicine. And now all this, na uh, all this line is known as electrophotonics. So those are electrons and photons stimulated by electrical field, electrophotonics. And uh, we tell about measuring energy of life. Uh, you know, here at this uh, workshop today and yesterday, it was presentations about energy of life. And of course, uh, we understand that if we have electrical activity in our body, if we have activity of our brain, then it is related to different fields. But very simple question, whether it's possible to measure fields. Do, can we measure magnetic field? Is it possible to measure magnetic field? It's a very simple question. No, it's impossible. It is impossible to measure magnetic field. It is possible only to measure the influence of magnetic field to something. For example, you can see the movement of needle. You can see the movement of electrons. So it is impossible, in principle, to measure any field. It is possible only to measure the influence of field to some physical situation. Same, it is impossible to measure consciousness. It is impossible to measure spirit. We can only measure the influence of consciousness or spirit on some physical situation. For example, you know, now we have very interesting line of study with orbs. You know this. So, uh, it is impossible to measure orbs. You can only measure the transformation of air under the influence of some energy. And this, those are orbs. That's why when we tell about measuring energy fields, again, we are measuring some effect. Uh, for example, Stefan, uh, he was presenting us uh, his own type of measurement. And it's really int very interesting. We have our own type of measurement. The more different instruments will be presented, the better, of course. Our advantage is that our instrument is very simple for use, and that's why we use it in different applications. So first of all, there's our medicine. And in medicine, it is accepted in different countries as medical instrument. In Russia, it is um, accepted by Ministry of Health. I will show you some examples. Then consciousness study. That is a very interesting line of study. And uh, now it is tremendous uh, time for our, all of us uh, to be involved in consciousness study. Because uh, last year I graduated a course on consciousness study in Arizona University in the United States. And it was a very interesting idea that 10 years ago it was shameful for scientists to mention that he or she is involved in consciousness study. It was not scientific. Now, due to development of new instrumentations, development of new approach, it is really a very uh, established line of uh, Western science. And I am absolutely sure that it will tr create tremendous shift in all our uh, scientific understanding. Then uh, we are involved in sports study. And as I mentioned, I am a deputy director of the National Institute of Physical Culture and Sport because we demonstrated that for athletes, for top level athletes, their energy, the level of their energy performance, it is the first and obligatory condition for high performance. And as we can measure energy, then we can predict the uh, c competition effectiveness of this or that particular athlete. So it was again designed as technology 
And now this technology is widely used in Russia. It is accepted by Ministry of Sport as one of the key technologies for sport. Then uh, water and material testing. And now we have interesting line of study in water. Uh, we study the structure of water. We have very interesting conferences on water study worldwide. And when uh, we've been in Vermont, uh, the very big conference on, uh, on water study, it was several presentations that demonstrated that now, together with impurities in water, we need to take into account the, uh, the structure of water. And with our approach, with our instrument, we can study the structure of water, and we can demonstrate the difference between natural water good spring water and artificial water from uh, purified water. Then psychology, we have uh, objective measurement of psychological parameters and energy of space. This we'll discuss today maybe in more details a little bit. So in medicine, this is first of all health diagnostic tool and health monitoring tool. And we have uh, more than 200 papers uh, published in medicine peer review journals with more than 6,000 patients only in peer review articles. So it is a lot of study. But uh, to make it clear, let me show you how we do this on practical level. We can create a database for a particular patient and a card for a particular patient. Or we can study a patient that we had before. OK, so let's take someone. And we can change, of course, uh, all parameters. Mm -hmm. Then we take images of fingers. Why only fingers? Because our fingers those are the most sensitive part of our body. We have all uh, sensors, all acupuncture meridiums on our fingers and our toes. And in our brain, sensor area of our hands and fingers is related to sensor area of all our organs. So it is holographic representation of all the systems and organs on our fingers. That's why when you feel energy with your hand, you really reflect energy of space and you exchange en energy of your body with energy of space. And you know, it's a lot of technologies how we can do this with your hands. And you know that all the babies, they need to touch everything with your hands. So um, I will show you, we have a map, a correlation map, and I have uh, several books, plenty of books published in English as well, uh, like this one. I will show, I will put it on display later on. So, and in these books, it's this uh, very detailed description how we do everything. So when we take those images, for every image, we have a lot of parameters. So we present this image as a spectrum, and we can study parameters of the spectrum. We calculate different parameters, about 20 parameters for every image. Then we present this image as, uh, as a line, and uh, then uh, we can apply uh, the principle of um, modern uh, image processing and uh, modern theory of information to this, uh, to calculate parameters. We calc uh, have some um, calculation, we calculate some uh, special design, um, testing parameters. Then we can calculate from those images, uh, different programs. For example, in this program, we can uh, see the overall condition of a, person, of a person. And those two lines, they are defined to activity of autonomic sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. So from comparing these lines, we can see a correlation and we can see the level of stress. For example, this number A in here this is the level of stress. And I can show you just an example. And uh, just from this program, we can, these uh, doctors can detect a lot of parameters. From this program, we can go to another program. 
where we create the image of energy field around the body. And this image, it's not only uh, some picture. It is really indication of different problems and systems of the body. So, just, just from the fingers. Just from the fingers, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. So we can see uh, these different uh, organs, systems, and we can define energy condition of different organs and systems. And again, in accordance with some principle, we can define physiological and psychological parameters. So those two images, they are taken with and without uh, special film. They allow us to distinguish between psycho-emotional state and physical state. So I would say this emotional picture, this is uh, a somatic condition. And for doctors, it is very clear indication of different parameters and they can really define uh, health condition of a person. Then we have one more program that allows us to see the energy of chakras. And this is very uh, interesting program, it's very precise. So uh, we can see every chakra with all description of those chakras and we can define a position and energy of every chakra. And it's very, very sensitive. This program was designed together with uh, several Ayurvedic doctors. And it was tested in different countries. Now, uh, in India, they take this as a key program for their analysis. And I was really surprised uh, to meet one person from India who told that he came to one of the top uh, spiritual leaders in India. And uh, he's an uh, Indian scientist, uh, but he works mostly in the United States. And his spiritual leader told him, oh, do you know about this camera from Dr. Kortkov? Oh, I've heard something. You need to take this camera because it's the most sensitive camera to define the energy of chakras. So uh, with this energy, we can influence, uh, the in, uh, we can study the influence of different uh, parameters, uh, different process to human energy. For example, we can uh, have a person before and after treatment, and we can see the influence to energy field, to chakras, uh, to energy level of different organs and systems. We can uh, see the condition of person before and after surgery, before and after meditation, before and after healing process before and after, for example, acupuncture treatment. So as it is very, very sensitive, at the same time it's very stable, this information is, uh, has variation of about several per percent. Uh, then we can really study uh, conditions of different situations. And this example of this diagnostic table, and uh, it is designed after um, acupuncture uh, Chinese uh, meridian points. Then it was tested uh, by, in Germany by Dr. Wall, then by Dr. Mandel. Then our team accepted this idea and we tested this idea with a lot, with thousands of patients in clinical trials. You know that in Russia we are very happy because our uh, scientists are very open-minded. We are not paid for our research. At the same time, we are absolutely free to do what we want. Uh, so we have no boundaries as in Western society. Here, uh, all professors, all doctors, they are very bounded by regulations. So they can't move aside. Uh, they may be expelled from their society, they may be expelled from their situation. In Russia, we are free. I have a lot of people who praise my work and they publish good papers, good articles. At the same time, I have a lot of people in Academy of Science who are against our work, who pu put very bad articles, but for me, it's nothing. It's just good side, bad side, and nothing else. <laughs> so, uh, because, uh, you know, it's always fighting. 
between old uh, forces, old pe old uh, minded people and new minded people. And it will be so. So we need to be even the best. We need to be to prove our uh, claims with the best data. Then we can really be on very solid ground. So we have hundreds of papers published. I have several books published in different languages. We have uh, thousands of instruments worldwide because they are on production line. They are certified in Europe as uh, instruments. Now we, have, we are preparing production line in the United States. So if we claim something, then it is very easy to take our instruments, to repeat results, to create your, your, your own results, and to prove whether it is real or not. And this is science. This is the difference of science from metaphysics. So uh, you see, with this monitoring of human state, we can really see very clear effects. For example, this is initial state of a person, and you see many holes, and all the holes there are related to different problems, different situations. And then uh, this is a person after some treatment. In this particular case, this is acupuncture treatment. So it's very, uh, and we can of course uh, evaluate in, uh, in uh, numbers. So we use ideas of traditional Chinese medicine, ideas of meridiums, uh, we use ideas of uh, Ayurvedic medicine, ideas of chakras, and we use Western knowledge of organs and systems. And we try to combine these together and to create uh, a bridge. And of course, it is proven that uh, this analysis is very precise. For example, it was studied done uh, in one very big uh, clinic, very big, for 542 patients. They was looking for correlations between our measurement, energy measurement, and classical measurement. And they found that correlations is from 70 to 95 percent. Very high correlations. And it was absolutely precise, uh, blind, independent study. Of course, we never claim that it's 95 percent, but we claim that it's 75, 80 percent of uh, correlations. Then it is very interesting data on cancer study. In oncology, oncological hospital, uh, they have developed approach uh, for early diagnostic of cancer. You see, this is statistical evaluation. And upper uh, box, this is statistical evaluation of group, big group of uh, women with breast cancer. And then those are same women after surgery. And those are group of practically healthy women. And you see it's statistically significant difference with very high probability. Now this technology is, is proven with different type of cancers um, and it is a very early stage of analysis. So we can detect it on very, very early stages. There are several symptoms, several parameters that we can detect. So now uh, we are developing in FDA, this is a technology for early diagnostic of cancer in the United States. In sport, uh, this is our institute, research institute, um, and we are able to approach top level athletes. Because in St. Petersburg we have a lot of uh, Olympic champions, world champions. Uh, we are responsible in particular for Paralympic movement. Uh, um, uh, it's a uh, sport of handicapped people. So we all the time we have tests with different uh, uh, athletes. And for example, this is a very famous athlete. Uh, it is a three times Olympic champion. His name is Karelin. He's a wrestler, huge guy, but very clever guy. Now he finished his sport career and he, now he's a colonel of tax police in Russia. And he's a member of parliament as well. Very clever guy. And uh, he, uh, on his example, we can see what does it mean good energy and bad energy. Of course, we use a lot of technologies in parallel. In particular, we always use genetic testing because it gives us idea of genetic predisposition. And we found that it's very good correlation between genetic predisposition and energy le level of uh, athletes. So it is very clear relation, of course, with other parts, with heart rate. And if you look to this graph, uh, you see red dots. Those are top level athletes, Olympic champions, world champions. Green dots, those are level, uh, athletes of very high level. 
uh, it's top, really top level, but not sti- not yet uh, champions. And blue dots, those are losers. <laughs> <laughs> so you see, it is, uh, and this is an example of uh, uh, multiparametric, so named multiparametric analysis. So when we are measuring some athlete before and after loading, before and after training. We can calculate a set of parameters and attribute this particular athlete to some position. Would it be high-level athlete or low-level athlete? Then we can create uh, this classification. For example, we have a team of uh, football players. We are measuring members of this team, and we give this rating. And uh, for coach, it's very good. For trainers, it's very good evaluation, uh, whether it is top level or low level. And sometimes it's really funny. Uh, for example, quite recently we've been measuring one team of um, athletes, and one guy who was considered as one of the top, he fell off down. Oh, everyone was surprised. But after inquiry, it was found that this guy, he had a beautiful new girlfriend, and he's more involved in with girlfriend, then with training. So it was a lot of stations like this. So this is very precise uh, computer classification. Uh, but now let's me concentrate a little bit on uh, consciousness studies, because this is really a very interesting topic. In consciousness studies, we have several lines of study. Uh, and uh, it is uh, influence of sensors to water, telepathy, Influence of people to each other, uh, direct vision, men, um, different special type of mental training. And of course, any subject may be a topic of special lecture, of course. So uh, time is limited. That's why I give you just a sketch of what's going on. Uh, so we study dynamical images. You see, it's a life energy field. So it is dynamic. And as any dynamic process, we can present it as a graph. So it's timeline, time dynamics. And it's very typical timeline. So first drop down due to some biophysical reasons I can explain. Uh, then it is some uh, variations, quite stable level. So it's typical dynamic line for normal person. Then look to this. You see, it is some variations, but then line is coming up. What does it mean? We can interpret as opening up of energy meridiums. Increase of energy. And this type of energy is always correlated with transformation to altered state of consciousness. Because uh, from our point of view, all uh, effects that we have in uh, this domain, in psyche domain, it is always related to transformation to altered state of consciousness. Would it be individual or collective? And we have a lot of study lines, a lot of examples. For example, this example of Ayurvedic ceremony. This ceremony was done in Peru, uh, in jungles at night, when it was a group of people. Uh, it was shamans with drums. We consumed ayahuasca. And then it was very interesting to see transformation of people around. For example, I felt uh, to be transformed to jaguar. I felt this tail, four, claws. So it was very interesting transformation. Then uh, for me, it was very interesting to um, switch from this state to normal state. And you can do this by some mental preparation. And to see people around. So they were jumping, crawling. Uh, they were... Uh, f- um, flying in the air and very interesting that all the jungles around they were totally transformed first of all uh, we were able to see a lot of snakes around that's why uh, when I look to Mayan uh, art to Aztec art with a lot of snake images it's understandable this all was created by these images when you are in this state uh, in Peyotl or Ayahuasca or some other drug, then you really can see absolutely different image around. And uh, you can see a lot of creatures around, around spiritual creatures, like uh, spirits around, and they are all around yourself. 
And then, of course, uh, people are totally transformed. Look to the picture. This initial state of a person. And then this is a person measured in the process of this Ayahuasca ceremony, because it takes several hours. And you see, this uh, uh, right part of the body is totally blocked. Practically no energy. And the right part of the body, it is related to left brain. Left brain, it is control of activity. It is control of logic. It is control of speech. That's why people can't control what they are doing. They uh, have all physiological uh, behavior, um, sometimes unpleasant. Uh, they can't control it. They can't control what they, how they behave, and they can't speak in this situation. And other part of the body, it is very active, very energetic. And this is our right brain. It is our subconscious. It is seat of all our subconscious information and our communication with the environment. And please pay attention to this little hole. It is pineal gland. Pineal, pineal gland. And it is shown now that it is interconnection with some higher spaces. And when a person is after this ceremony, then it is a special procedure how they close your energy field, and it's obligatory, because open energy field literally means uh, vulnerable to all influences. So they are closing this energy field, but still this hole it's still there. And we've seen a lot of cases of this hole for uh, people who have some um, clairvoyant uh, potentials, have, have some uh, things like this. Then uh, when people transform to energy, uh, to conscious, uh, altered state of consciousness, they have very interesting transformation of light coming from their fingers. You see, this is initial state, normal state, and this is the type of transformation. And this is very interesting because it's dynamic picture. You see. Oh, no, come back. So this is dynamical process. And it's very interesting from physical point of view. And of course, it is very interesting uh, from presentation as well. So from uh, understandable from physical point of view uh, images, we transform to something like this, and this is measurable, dynamical. It may be double rings, it may be very uh, special um, uh, types of energy. So it may be interpreted like laser type of emission coming from fingers. Maybe you can recall from uh, different uh, sci uh, f uh, movies, when which they project their fingers and then they emit light. That's real. It's a real picture. And it is based on Frolic concept of um, coherent uh, state of our systems. You know this concept? It's based on the concept of holographic presentation of our uh, body. And it means that in altered state of consciousness, when people transform to the state, they really have all their body in correlated state. And it is in total correlation with modern concept of uh, quantum electrodynamics developed by the group of Del Giudici. The concept based on uh, the principle of coherent state and coherent domains in water. So in some particular state, in our body, in our blood, lymph, we create coherent domains, and all our system operate as one coherent state. And I'm absolutely sure that, uh, of course, it is in correlation with higher spaces, with collective consciousness. Then we may be attuned to this collective consciousness. Then uh, let me tell a couple of words about telepathy experiments. Uh, you know that uh, I've been involved to this type of experiments from Soviet time, because we've been creating in Soviet system, in Soviet time, in mid 70s, um, uh, the system of uh, interconnection with uh, submarines and uh, satellites uh, by telepathy. 
So we have created this technology and still we have this line of study. And But now to make this research, we go to some remote places like Nepal mountains and we go high in the mountains. Uh, and those ugly guys, those are Russian scientists sitting in Nepal. Then to Venezuela mountains, again very high in the mountains. And in all our experiments, uh, we don't transform uh, images or uh, letters or words. We transform emotions. So we send emotions from one person to another person. And both guys, sender and receiver, they are sitting uh, with a lot of equipment. They are wired to electroencephalographic equipment. They are wired to electrophotonic equipment. They are wired to some other devices. And then uh, in totally correlated time, one person is sending his or her emotion. And another person is measured whether he or she can respond to these emotions. So it was demonstrated that in this condition, person, uh, people create so-named virtual brain. So their brains, those are, uh, they are correlated with each other. It's, uh, and brain activity is absolutely different from normal state. And uh, when we're measuring energy, we see transformation of this energy in all the process. You see this is again dynamic line. So this is time scale uh, for about an hour. This initial state of a person. Then people transform to altered state and energy drops down. And it's not just one click process. It takes several stages. So you see it is first stage, then it goes up a little bit, then it comes down even more. Then in this state, uh, one person is really in deep uh, altered state, he can send his emotion to Moscow, from uh, Nepal to Moscow, or from uh, Venezuela to Moscow, or from St. Petersburg to Moscow. And you see this coming up energy. It is very huge energy outcome. So it's really energy consuming process. And this process takes, uh, allows to influence other people. Of course, we've been studying a lot of psyche people all over the world. This example of one uh, famous uh, master of Qigong, he's able to use both uh, in yang energy and yang energy. In yang energy, he can break bricks and he can make a lot of physical activity. In, in energy, he can uh, be suspended in the air. And if you pay attention here, he is standing on eggs. Eggs. You see. And uh, those are very uh, subtle eggs. So he's like suspended in the air and he can paint Chinese picture standing on eggs. And uh, we've been measuring him. Of course, we can measure uh, his uh, energy. And uh, this is interesting, too, we can measure this, uh, change of this energy in different process. For example, you know, it is Tum Mo Yoga. It is uh, exercise when yogin, they are sitting in uh, Himalaya, in the mountains. They put wet blankets on their body and they warm up those blankets. So it's the uh, exercise is two more yoga. I have one guy in St. Petersburg uh, who is uh, the head of one uh, training center in St. Petersburg. So he has developed this two more yoga approach. And we've been measuring him before this exercise and after this exercise. You see it, is, it was in springtime when it was quite cold outside. And he was sitting there for uh, half an hour and he was able to dry up this. And all the process, in accordance with process, he was measured. And you see, we've been measuring his chakras. And this first six, one, two, three, four, five, six, those are measurements taken before this experiment in his initial condition. Then all other moments, those are taken uh, every three minutes, you see time scale, in the process of his uh, exercise. And you see 
huge increase of energy in the process. And for every chakra, it was different. This is Sahasrara chakra, it's upper chakra, and it is chakra that is most involved. In Ajna, it was less, in Vishuddha, Anahata, Manipura, Svathistana. So if we compare all the chakras, we see that high chakra, this is the most involved chakra in the process. And Manipura chakra, solar plexa, solar plexus chakra. Again, this is the most involved chakra. Uh, Vishuddha, it is a chakra of fire. Again, it is strongly involved. But um, consciousness, mind chakra, and heart chakra, they are absolutely stable. They are absolutely quiet. So it is totally in accordance with the principle of this exercise. They block their mind, they block their emotions, and they operate with energy, transforming energy from space to their body. And using energy of uh, Anahata to increase energy from uh, Svathistana through uh, solar plexus chakra and to warm up uh, their body, to increase the energy and temperature of their body. So it was very clear correlation. And we have developed a map of uh, altered state of consciousness uh, based on um, activity of mind, activity of body, and energy of body. And you see, this um, altered state of consciousness, it's not just only people who are involved in healing or in meditation. We have a lot of situations in our practical life when people transform to altered state of consciousness. Uh, it was proven that a lot of uh, ladies, after delivery, baby delivery, they transformed to altered state of consciousness. A lot of women in baby feeding, they transformed to altered state of consciousness. That's why uh, it's one of the advantage for, of baby feeding, uh, both for baby and for mother. Then it was, uh, it is a big problem in medicine. Uh, after surgery and anesthesia, a lot of people transformed to altered state of consciousness. And this may be dangerous because they wake up they don't understand what's going on with them. They try to turn off all tubes and all equipment. They try to go somewhere, and it may be very bad and dangerous. So now we have big research project in our military medical academy. We try to find uh, correlations of this transformation to altered state of consciousness before surgery. And in accordance with energy measurement, uh, it, is, it seems to me that it may be possible. We have a lot of signs of this uh, transformation and of this correlation. Then, of course, um, uh, it's very interesting to study the influence of uh, people to uh, different uh, stations. You know, it's a lot of discussion about healing, whether it is real, whether it's not real, um, about psyche people. Uh, we've been studying a lot of healing process, of influence of people to each other. With our technology, it's very easy. But for me, it's much more interesting to study the influence of people to sensors. So I've developed a set of sensors based on different physical principles. But finally, we transformed to measuring uh, everything through water. Because water, those are very, very sensitive liquid. And uh, just uh, Stefan, he mentioned the, the importance of water for our life. And it's really so. We have a lot of uh, situations measured like this as well. But uh, when, if people can influence water in a glass, then we are 70% of water. Then it's understandable Then these people can influence other people as well. So we have a special device how to measure water. And you see this is initial measurement, this is after the influence. It is clear. Then again, another guy, uh, Valery Nagibin, he's uh, very famous in Germany. So initial measurement, statistical comparison after his influence. So you see statistically really significant difference. Initial after his influence from 300 kilometers. Uh, then we had a very interesting uh, set of experiments. Uh, idea was as follows. We uh, put five bottles in our laboratory, 
labeled uh, with different colors. And then it was agreement with some people to influence one of the bottle from the distance. It was from Japan to St. Petersburg, from Germany to St. Petersburg, from United States from, to St. Petersburg. And uh, bottles were standing there from 9 till 12. Then they've been measured. And you see, for normal sample, it is it's, uh, quite stable measurement in time. So again, it's time dynamics of signal. So if it is if what is intact, then it gives very stable signal. But look to this line. It's coming up, you see. So it's clear influence uh, of uh, some person. Then uh, at this graph, again, three lines, they're quite stable. One line is very flexible. So it is clear indication that some bottles was intact, some bottles was under influence. And from all uh, about 20 experiments that we've done, about 70% was successful. But not always it was matched with uh, desire of a person and with real uh, influence. And even he here, you see, look, please look here. This green line, it is changeable, very changeable from the very beginning. But this red line, it's stable, but then it comes up. So it means, uh, and it again it was shown, that if we have active water, that this active water can really influence other water standing nearby. And of course, water is the basis of, uh, uh, of our life and of our environment. So uh, of course, it's very interesting to take measurements in space as well. And we have developed approach how to take measurement in space, in the environment. And uh, you know that uh, we have a lot of process in our life now, but let's go very quickly, very short. Uh, one of the uh, important moment that we have now in our civilization, those are influence of electromagnetic fields. We have absolutely new environmental situation in a lot of industrial areas compared with the situation of 20 years ago. Absolutely different. Never before on the Earth it was so huge amount of electromagnetic fields. Maybe only in uh, seven billion years ago when Earth was just creating. So uh, we have, we are sitting here but we are surrounded by chaotic electromagnetic fields. We have a lot of mobile phone stations, we have TV stations, we have radio, we have military, uh, technological and what so on. Plus, of course, uh, the influence of wires, different wires. So it is really significant factor for our life. And you know that now we have a new generation of children. We have a lot of new diseases. So, uh, from our point of view, a lot of this is related to the influence of electromagnetic fields, and this is clearly demonstrated by experiments. So, those are statistical measurement of group of people, initial condition, red box, and this blue box, those are after 10 minutes of speaking on the phone. Absolutely clear effect. I've seen a very funny uh, movie on the internet, uh, very funny, you can repeat it as well. Three students, they're sitting, and they put their mobile phones just in a, a triangle. And then they put uh, popcorn in between those mobile phones. Then they call the mobile phones, and this popcorn explode. <laughs> so it's a very <laughs> clear experiment. So we need to understand that, of course, this factor is very important. And we need to protect ourselves from... Uh, mobile phones in particular, and we have a clear understanding how it should be done and what measures should be taken. So uh, we uh, develop approach how to measure uh, the energy of space. It's based on some physical principles and uh, it is implemented as so named five element sensor. Uh, because the idea to, to take measurements of five main elements in nature. 
and uh, we have this sensor, and it allows to measure from water, uh, ground, earth, uh, vegetation, air, and the fifth element, those are fire that we have as plasma in our instrument. Uh, I can, of course, explain physical principle of this instrument, um, but l let me show maybe better some results. of. Uh, so this uh, instrument, this is on production line, so everyone can use it, and now we have uh, maybe several, maybe about 100 instruments worldwide because it's quite a new development. So uh, you see, this is the influence of gospel songs to water. And initial measurement, then uh, earphones, they are just lay nearby this glass. You see, this uh, looks like this. We have vial of water, and earphones, they are laying just nearby, and at some moment we just turn on this gospel song. And you see absolutely clear difference. Then the influence of uh, uh, Gaia uh, tree mantra again. But it's uh, authentic uh, mantra uh, recorded in India. And you see again, very clear effect. Then absolutely clear effect of Quran prayer written in Mecca, very clear effect. And as control, we put some text written, just some st story, and it was no effect at all. So it means that not just sound, not physical vibration of air, but the content somehow has an influence. And uh, from our point of view, it's the change of structure of water. Then it, we had a very interesting experiment this uh, last year. On the 1st of August, um, it was total sun eclipse in uh, Siberia, in Novosibirsk area. And it was uh, big research done uh, together with Academy of Science of Russia. So you know that sun eclipse, it comes like a line against uh, along the surface. So Novosibirsk, it's a big city, it was just in between this line. So we were able to put six instruments in different parts of the area, and all six instruments, they gave us very correlated data. You see, it was very v high waves and uh, correlation and very high um, uh, activity before sun eclipse, and then it was very stable signal just at the moment of sun eclipse. All in all, this sun eclipse, total sun eclipse, is, is really fantastic. I've never expected to have a so strong emotional effect. Because, um, of course, you can watch the sun with glasses, but when it comes total darkness, it is really a strong emotional feeling, tremendous feeling. And before sun eclipse, it was very interesting station in atmosphere. We were standing in countryside, and we were standing in the garden in summertime, and everything was absolutely quiet around us, absolutely. But 100 meters away, all trees was just bending. It was huge wind coming there. So it is really very interesting process in atmosphere, and you see it is high variations <laughs> before sun eclipse, and very stable signal after. It's another sensor in different area, Again, very high variation before, stable signal after. Then again, next uh, sensor, again, very high. And what's interesting, stability of signal after sun eclipse, it's about 1%. So 99.9% .9 stable. Before sun eclipse, variation is about 3, 4%. So if we look to the graph, we see variation before, it's from you see, from 3 to, to 6% variation. After, it is about 1.7, 1.5%. So it's very stable signal for all six sensors standing in different parts of the area. Then, um, after this uh, Novosibirsk experiment, I came uh, to meet uh, Masaru Yamoto. You know his experiment, he's a wonderful guy. He has a lot of interesting images. And we came to Baikal Lake. Baikal Lake, it's a lake in Siberia. It is the deepest lake in the world. The depth of this lake is 1.7 kilometers depth. And it's fresh water. 
And uh, in accordance with modern concept, it's so named primordial water. So it's initial water from uh, the origin. So it is very pure, and uh, this water has, um, I would say, um, natural way of purification. In one part of the lake, there are uh, some source of oil. So oil is coming from the ground, natural oil. But there are no contamination of oil in the lake. There are special bacterium living there. They consume the soil and transform it to some biological substance. And it's a beautiful lake. It's wonderful. It's huge, beautiful. They have uh, beautiful uh, landscapes. And we came there with a group of uh, Masari Yimota. And the uh, idea was uh, he was intended to make a ceremony. A ceremony of blessing the lake. And we have a crew of uh, our central TV to um, make a film from this. Uh, but when we came there, we came to a special island. And this is a shaman rock. So it's a place where local people have shaman ceremonies for centuries or millenniums. And we came there with this whole group. I prepared all my equipment. They prepared all their cameras. And at this very moment, it started raining. And you understand that it's a very bad station. And I've told the producer of a film. It's a beautiful lady. Her name is Saida. Saida, please do something. Please ask him to help us. And she told, oh God, please. We came here from all over the world, from thousands and thousands of kilometers. We've spent so many time and money in preparing this. We need only four hours, not more. Please give us. And you can imagine, in five minutes, rain stopped and clouds was gone. And we had sun over there. And it was so interesting to see. It was sun up there. And it was snow, it was storming on the other side of the lake. And it was exactly four hours when Yimota finished his ceremony. At the very moment, it started raining again. And I've done a measurement of his, this ceremony, all the process. And you see this is a graph of this ceremony. And you see this is the uh, beginning of ceremony. And uh, in the beginning of people was gathering. Then they started preparation explaining. And number one, they started explaining. And you see energy is coming up. And this is measurement uh, from space, not from people. Just sensor. This five element sensor standing just nearby uh, this area, this place of ceremony. So it's coming up. Then it was uh, uh, first meditation uh, led by uh, Dr. Nemota, the helper. And you see energy is coming down because meditation process uh, typically balance energy is coming down. Then at number three, Dr. Nemota came in. And energy dropped up, jumped up, very clear. Then he again started his presentation, his meditation, and energy is coming down. Uh, then he begins blessing on the water, and energy is coming up again. And number five, he uh, starts singing a um, special samurai song. And you see, very strong increase of energy, very strong. So it is absolutely clear correlation between um, his presentation and measurement. And it was funny that we were coming down. Uh, it was raining. We were, had a boat for an hour. And then when we approached the harbor, rain stopped. And we had these beautiful rains. And then we had beautiful, beautiful double rainbow. So it was really beautiful sun, uh, beautiful uh, image. Uh, then uh, it was, we had a lot of um, experiments of this kind. Uh, but very interesting experiment was done in Los Angeles. Uh, they have a movement, so named Reconnection Healing. Those are uh, several people who are developing uh, their own type of healing, very special type of healing. And we've been measuring people before and after this uh, ceremony. It was clear effect of uh, chakram 
and energy field. And we've been measuring uh, the products of CERM uh, uh, presentation as well, itself. And you see, this first part, this is preparation of a lecture, of some presentation, or so on. And then at this moment, the guy, the leader of this group, he came in and started his presentation. And you see, huge difference, a really huge difference. And it was repeated in several days. So in several days, we had same effect. You see initial state and then his presentation. And all the moments of presentation, they were reflected on the measurement. And what was interesting in this um, measurement, that uh, they invited three teams. It was uh, one team of Bill Tiller, William Tiller, from uh, Stanford University. They had their own technology on measuring uh, pH of water in special device. It was a team from Arizona University led by Gary Schwartz. Uh, he's using uh, their own uh, measurements. And it was our team, we are using our measurements. And in all three um, type of measurement, it was clear reflection of this type of presentation. So, it means, and it's very significant, because it's not only one team, one technology, but it's different technology, different teams. Uh, and it's really very important, uh, significant effect for all of us, because it shows us that we can really measure the energy of space under the influence of collective consciousness. Really, with all our intention, with our consciousness, we can change the energy of space. So we've done some measurements uh, in church during um, uh, church ceremony. It's really paradise island. And they have a yoga temple. And every morning at 6 o'clock in the morning, group of people, about 150 people, they're sitting there with collective meditation. And you see, this is influence of chanting and this influence of meditation to water. So it is and this initial state of water. And then they, I asked all this group of meditators to send their love to water. And together they've sent their love to water and you see the effect. Initial <coughs> measurement and after they've sent their love to water. So it's really huge statistical effect. And this water, it kept its, this information for a day or several days after this uh, influence some measurements in crop circles and Konstantin Pavlidis who is here, uh, we've done it together. And uh, we were lucky to come to this particular crop circle uh, just uh, next day after it was formed. So it was formed on Friday and we came there on uh, Saturday morning. And uh, we, uh, you know, this crop circle, they have uh, specific construction. And uh, of course we've done, uh, first we've taken measurements outside of crop circles, and it was very stable signal like this. So it was very, very stable signal. And then we've taken measurement inside the crop circle. And it was huge increase of signal, and this is a measurement during one hour. So for all the hour, you see it was initial measurement outside of crop circle, and this is inside of crop circle. And we've been using several sensors, with soil in different parts of this crop circle, with water, with air, and all the sensors, they demonstrated this increase of energy. So it was very, very interesting result. And of course, it was always related to uh, change of human energy as well. So we had uh, we had done measurements of human energy, and it was always increase of human energy as well. So it was a very interesting effect. Uh, you know, in Aubrey, uh, there are a nice uh, area, beautiful area. There are local people there <laughs> from an Celtic time, from ancient time. And uh, in Aubrey, we've done a measurement in different places. But the most interesting was done at the biggest stone, the key stone in Aubrey. And uh, I put, it was very cold by that time. Very cold. It was springtime, but very cold in uh, March. So I, I put several sensors into the soil. And one sensor, it was left, I put it inside the stone itself, in little crevice. 
And then we've done measurement. And in most, in soil, it was very stable signal. No effect at all. Very, very stable. Not, no effect. But inside the stone, it was really huge effect. And you, I always recall this uh, Arthur tales of sword and stone, yes? So from physical point of view, it is total nonsense because the distance between sensors, those are only one meter. One sensor inside the soil, one sensor inside the stone. And stone is non-conductive, again. If you tell it to physicists, they tell, oh, maybe it's crazy. But it's measurement. It's real measurement. And we have a lot of measurements of this kind. For example, let me show you one more, maybe. Uh, we are uh, organizing uh, expeditions to different parts of the world, so I have a lot of data of this. I have some of this published in books. Uh, so in Peru, Peru is a country of wonders. If you really want to have uh, wonderful land, go to Peru. It's a fantastic journey, really fantastic. And uh, they have very good attitude to people. They have very good hotels, very nice place, wonderful food, very good, very nice people around, very smiling, polite, very safe, everything. So it's really a fantastic place. And you know that uh, there are Nazca lines, so you can fly around Nazca lines. You can see ancient uh, cities. Of course, uh, you need to go to Machu Picchu. And we've done uh, ceremonies with shamans on the way. Uh, because we, we've been together with a group of French doctors. And at one ceremony, I was trying to take measurement in uh, Titicaca Lake, but everything failed. All battery was drained after 20 minutes. Next time we had ceremony is in Urubamba Valley. And there uh, it was much better prepared. I have several packs of batteries. So I was able to take measurement for several hours. And please have a look. This is light coming from metal cylinder. So it is normal physical effect. Metal cylinder and light coming from metal cylinder. And this is transformation of this light in the middle of ceremony. You see? Huge difference. And then slowly it came back to initial condition. So this was this transformation in the middle of ceremony, and then it slowly restored So it was a really very uh, strong effect, and uh, it's written in a couple of my books. Um, so you can find them on internet or from the publisher. And it's interesting that we have uh, our congresses every year. And uh, now this will be beginning of July as well. It was 2008. Now we have uh, same dates, 2009. And this is a meeting of people from all over the world. This is a beautiful city, St. Petersburg, uh, because uh, by July we have white nights. And it's, we have no night at all. So at night you can read books. It's beautiful. We have all bridges. Uh, open, so it is really fantastic, and it's a fun um, meeting of different people. Because our Russian scientists, as I've told, they are much more open to new ideas. And uh, for example, uh, last week, this week, this week still, I had presentation, uh, I was lecturing in Moscow State University at physical department. So I was invited there to, take to make lectures, and I was uh, not sure how it will be accepted, all these crazy ideas. But it was very well accepted. I had a lot of questions, a lot of discussions. Of course, it was skeptical people, of course. But uh, in most of physicists, they had very good attitude. And finally, one of the top professors of uh, Russian, the top physicist, Professor Vladimirsky, he told that now we are transforming to new millennium. And it's not uh, 2012, it's now. We are now in the process of transformation. And it's huge transformation of all society, of all spiritual life, of all consciousness attitude to life. And this economic crisis is just a little part of this transformation. So now we are transforming to new type of physics, 
to new branch in physics. This is a physics of non-locality, of non-local interactions. And this is very quite established branch of modern physics. Uh, now we have uh, even practical applications like quantum computing, quantum decoding. It's all based on non-local interactions of uh, different subjects on quantum level. And as we accept that our brain is operating on quantum principles, then with our brain we can influence uh, environment through these non-local interactions. With our brain, with our conscious, we can interact with each other. We can interact with processes in, in atmosphere, and we can change the structure of the world. If it is positive emotions, we can change it in positive way. If it negative emotions, of course, it gives negative process. So uh, there are some ideas that um, this strong turmoil in atmosphere that we have all over the world now, it is somehow maybe related to our human activity, both physical and consciousness. And of course, this is very beautiful light. And uh, I am absolutely sure that by combination of our wisdom, knowledge, and modern technology, we'll be able really to uh, go to the next level of generation. Okay, so now I'm out of time, seems to me. So thank you very much. And...